our musical guest today. I got to see him. Uh, I guess it's it's it was. Well, I know it was fall 2015, and uh, so that's you know pretty close to four years ago. And I was impressed with him then, and he has gotten nothing but better. And so pleased, I am so pleased. He got up early this morning to drive down to Wimbledon to come here, Mr. Dylan Bishop. How you doing today? Real good, thanks. Happy well, to be here, man. Well, well, thank you so much. And you know, we got to tell people right off today because I, I, I mistakenly I, I missed your age. I thought you were the ripe age of 21, and you're not quite there yet. Huh? <laughs> not quite. Not quite. <laughs> so uh, obviously, you got started at a young age. How early did you start playing the guitar? I was uh, seven years old when I started. Now, did you start with lessons, or did you just start playing around and you know watching YouTube and listening to records and figuring it out? Well, I had like, so my older brother, I, my brother Zach's two years older, and he wanted to get a guitar. And so he got one, and I just did it too to kind of copy him or whatever. And, uh, and my dad did as well, and all three of us played. And we took lessons, with, and it was real formal, but I was kind of already developing an idea of, I was learning like ACDC riffs and things in my bedroom and started just going that route. But I took lessons for a while, formal. formal. Well, that's cool that your dad joined in and, and learned, yeah. tried to learn the guitar. Now, is your dad still playing? No, my dad's not. My brother's not either. They both played for about two years, and they just kind of let it go. Yeah, but 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 the younger brother just kept kept going. With I it. liked it. <laughs> <laughs> you liked it. And, and, and so, uh, you, you, I mean, did you start off on electric or did you have a guitar, uh, acoustic guitar? Yeah, I started off on electric. Um, yeah, so you get the nice tone for, for the ACDC right song. from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. totally. Now, now were you were you uh, walking around your bedroom like like, like a, a Angus on those? Yeah. Yeah, man. I had a. <laughs> I was going to a Catholic private school at the time, and I would come home with my uniform on and be all like Angus Young. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is fantastic! That yeah. is fantastic. And, and so, how long that stage last? I mean, I mean, did you start till today? Till today, <laughs> you still got your uniform. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, so, uh, did you meet other guys? Did you start trying to form a band, or, or where, where did it all take you in, in your early stages? There, you know. Uh, for the first good while, probably for the first five or so years of me playing, it was mostly just on my own, develop, you know, like I said, in my bedroom, developing things, using the internet a lot, YouTube, like you said, to find music and learn some things a little more easily or whatever. But I was, it was just on my own, developing a lot of those abilities or skills or whatever for yeah. a while. But, but then something came about and you switched and got interested in the blues. Tell us that story. Yeah. Um, I was just on YouTube. I used to get on YouTube a lot and find a lot of old great stuff. And then I remember one day, I was probably like 11, and I still remember it pretty clearly. I heard, an, I clicked on Elmore James recording. It's a song called Blues Before Sunrise. And it was just like, I was pretty entranced or whatever by it. I was, it was, um, it was just like from outer space. I'd never <laughs> heard anything with that kind of intensity, you know. And so what happened next? I mean, did you just start delving into Elmore James and all the other people around him? Or yeah. uh, did you change guitars, change guitars, definitely probably change the guitar style, playing styles a little bit there? Yeah, definitely that started going on. Um, definitely ch style started changing a bit. Although the place I was coming from was pretty soulful and rooted in that already. Again, Angus Young and people like that had a good foundation. But definitely I started picking up on more of the subtleties over time. Um, and... Uh, so yeah, it was just kind of, I just, I looked at more Elmore James recordings and then started to connect the dots and find uh, some other guys. All right, so you, you got to connect the dots a little bit for me right here, because mm -hmm. from age 11, when you've discovered this, to age, let's say 14 or 15, you knew that the, that you wanted to be a guitar player. Oh, yeah. And, and the blues guitar player at that. I mean, you already had it. It was So what What developed in those from 11 to 15? What, were you in bands or were you still just playing around? Did you do any open mics or anything else like that? Yeah, you know, I did a few little of these, like, open mic and, uh, like, when I was really young, recital kind of things where you'd get up and you'd play for all the parents and that deal. And I, did, and I really liked that. And then when I was about, and I just continued playing at home, though. Played in a few little bands, but nothing that serious. And then in, when I was about 13 or 14, I started playing little restaurant shows with a friend of mine from high school who played bass named Matt. And we would play like Jimmy Reed and stuff. By that time, I was already into a lot of that. Oh yeah, but just for, just at fourteen years old to know who Jimmy Reed is is, is yeah. a big plus. That is a big <laughs> plus, man. Uh, that, that is fantastic. But uh, you know, it, uh, 
you talk about one of the articles I read about you. You talked about it as a freshman in high school. You knew then that you wanted to do that. So you, you set your academic schedule up to graduate early, a year early, so you could you know go out and start playing full time. Yeah, I just said um. By that time, I was definitely knew what direction I wanted to go, and a lot of that was because, like, a lot of young guitar players, Stevie and Jimmy Vaughn, you know, Stevie Ray and Jimmy, both those guys, I learned about them. I'm like, man, they came up in Dallas, and they went, you know, they just did it, and I'm like, I just want to do it, and so I, I wanted to get out of school as quickly as possible, but uh, my mom and my parents wanted me to finish, which I understand, so I knocked it out a little early. <laughs> well, that's good. We're, we're all glad you finished high school and everything else like that, being a former teacher and everything else yeah. like that. But So when did you start fronting your first band? I mean, when, did you, when it was when it was Dylan Bishop on the marquee? Well, pro in those earliest little restaurant gigs is when it first that started happening, and it just developed from there. Um, then I met... I got linked up with another... I started going to some local jams. I got you, and yeah. And I should include that. Yeah, and that's how I met some other musicians and started to put a band together. I, I got you. I, now, and when you, when you start hooking up with them, you start hooking up with some quality yeah. Fort Worth Dallas uh, all, uh, guys that have been in the blues for a long time. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, how'd that all happen? Because I... I, I can see some of them say, there's that little punk kid over there again, but, but hey, he plays a pretty good guitar. I guess I'll, I'll play with him, you know? Well, yeah, I, um, my dad started, I was like, okay, I want to put a band together, and my dad started driving me around to some of the local jams, and I met, like, I met one guy in particular named Rio, Rio Casey. He was another guitar player and singer and great player, and he introduced me to some other local Dallas guys like Hash Brown and Mike Morgan, and just through, I was really fortunate, like you said, to get to meet some of those people, and they just from there i just started meeting more and more and they were all so gracious and friendly and now, now at first I, I understand that you were just a guitar player and, yeah. and didn't sing much but i, I don't know somebody somebody made I, I saw a good quote from somebody that got you out singing now, I, I don't know if that's about if you just want to stare at the other guy's butt right yeah that's yeah that's what my dad had said. that was your dad saying that yeah, <laughs> yeah totally i just was was totally content and would still be content to play guitar only but i do enjoy singing and he definitely pushed me in that direction and at first like probably most people i felt a little self-conscious or goofy doing it but pretty quickly i broke out of that and really enjoy singing too oh that, that is awesome well let's uh go ahead and hear one of your songs right now and then uh uh tell us about what you're gonna play here all right um yeah i'll play just like uh, some blues for you and all that sammy myers too all right Wonder what's the matter with my poor little angel child? Well, cause she didn't come home this morning until the clock was striking five. Well, all in my sleep, baby, I could hear my doorbell ring. Hey, 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 I could hear my doorbell ring. Yeah, but when I woke up this morning, I couldn't find a doggone thing. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, 
Dylan Bishop, folks. Right. Dylan Bishop. Troy Barnes, our number one fan, one of our fa big fans right here, says, sounds awesome. And I got to agree. That sounded so good there. All right. Thank so you. good. Uh, you know, we, we, were, we were talking before that, uh, you know, I actually went to see you in, in the fall of 2015. But it, it's funny is it was a. Uh, it was an elementary teacher here in Wimberley that told me I need to go see you. That he'd seen you in Austin play before, as, you know, however young you were then, you know, in 2015, you know, uh, 17 or 16 as it was, and yeah. uh, you know, all we already performing. So when you were in, you when did you put together that band that you had in Fort Worth? Because those, those guys were, you know, all of them were. Twice as old as you were, at least. And <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I guess I got that group to finally together when I was about 15 years old. Um, uh, through my through the uh, Rio Casey again, he introduced me to uh, some of those guys. Cadillac Johnson is, is the guy who did and still does play bass with me in that band. Uh, he's a has a long history with Texas musicians, you know, Lightning Hopkins. Lightning and Hopkins, yeah. A lot of those guys, Juke Boy Bonner. And so I got... I hooked up with him and then Dirk Cordez, the drummer, just kind of same thing. But another long history of playing with some really great guys. And yeah. And, and even though, you know, Dallas Fort Worth has a big history of blues and stuff, you still had your sights on coming to Austin, Texas. Yeah, I guess um, I just had that in my head from an early age. Before I had, when I was still really developing some ideas about what I wanted to do, I'd didn't have an idea of Dallas Blues, but I already had an idea of Austin Blues just because of, I don't know why. Um, D Dallas obviously has a really rich blues history that goes back a long ways. But I just had Austin in my head as this place where you could go and play guitar all day. And you could do that in Dallas maybe too, but I don't know. I just, just like want, Austin. Say, though, I wanted to get out of town. And, and, and of course, that was the progression of the Vaughn brothers. They both, exactly. they both were in the Dallas Fort Worth area and South Oak Cliff, and they migrated down to Austin. Yeah, totally. I yeah, they, they got it in my head, and I knew about some local musicians already. I was like, yeah, there's a thing kind of going on there. That I'd like to check it out. And, and so, when you moved to Austin, did, did you have a? I mean, you got a different band in Austin than you do in Fort Worth, and did did you already know those guys, or did you just get to Austin and start playing some jams and putting it together? Um, well, I, for the first while I was coming down and playing Austin, I I was still bringing my Dallas Dirk and Cadillac and Dirk were coming down with me, and they would drive down every like every Tuesday night. We had a regular show at Sea Boys, and they did that for a while, and then finally I there was a few people in the area who I was already aware of just by being a fan of them. And I got to meet them, and now I get to play with them, which is cool. Uh, so, so it was one of those things, you, you, you were playing with them, you said, hey, I'm going to start a band, you know, I'm yeah. putting together a band, you want to play with me? Yeah, yeah totally, totally, and they were real cool. Um, guy who play with, he plays drums with me most of the time, Damian Yanez, and um, a few bass players, a guy named Billy Horton, and just who guys, again, who are heroes of mine and were really gracious to me and still are. Uh, so I, I love the way you talk that you still have respect for all the, I mean, lots of respect for the uh, of these people right here that mm -hmm. you heard of the, the past, I guess, you know, and that, that man, that just warms my heart up. Uh -huh. We got, we got to take a little break right here and do a station ID, and we'll be right back with more Dylan Bishop. Don't go in. Great stories and great, great time with this young guitar player here. Uh, and, and so, you put out a couple hour albums, and mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, you're you're 20 years old, and so when that first album came about, how old were you? I guess I would have been 17 with the first one. Uh, and how'd that go? I, I know that uh, is that the one that has a lot of covers, or is that one you? It's too, if you're... That one? No, this one has fewer. The first one I did has mostly originals and maybe like oh. two cover, two or three covers. Um, yeah, I just started to, when I was kind of coming out to Austin already. I was like, oh, I want to put, put together a CD, and so I knew about a guy who was a bass player around town named Billy Horton, uh, and I was a fan of his because he recorded and played with a guy named Nick Curran, who you know everyone knows. yes everybody everyone, knows everyone Nick should Curran. know who that is, and um, so I, and I was just like a huge fan of those recordings, and I, I got in touch with Billy pretty easily through the local scene, and I told him I want to make a record, and then we did it. Oh, awesome, awesome. Now, uh, had you been writing songs already at that point in time? or No, I really hadn't. I, and I, when I reached out to him originally, I said, I just want to do a bunch of these covers. And, and I sent him all the covers I wanted to do. And he said, oh, those are cool, but you should just write 
stuff that take what you like about those and write your own thing. Like, you could do that. And I'm like, okay. So I, we've set a date to record, and I just put to, I put together the songs between then in a matter of a month or two. Wow. I mean, you went from not writing to writing all these songs Yeah, all just kind of, yeah, feeling a little pressure. Not really, but enough healthy pressure to push me along. And did it evolve from uh, you finding a melody first and then putting words to it, or did you come up with words and then put a song to it? Um, most of the time, it's just... Being a guitar player first, I seem to come up with a guitar riff, or yeah, like you said, a melody, and then I usually start there, and then words will come after. Oh, that, yeah. that's awesome! That is awesome. And, and, and so you made that first album, and then mm -hmm. you turned around two, two years later, was it? Yeah, uh, about two the... years later. That's right. Um, and they, and by that time, people were like, "Hey, you should put out something else soon." And there's a friend of ours in Fort Worth, that guy named Wes Race, who um, is another guy that a lot of people should know, and he. Uh, he said you, he would help us out to go in and record, and he's helped a lot of guys, Hound Dogs, had a lot of people out over the years. And anyway, that's how that came about. And we, that that one is called Distilled, and we just put that's mostly covers. He's just like y'all are sounding real hot right now with the Fort Worth band, so we just went in and kind of cut our live set. So, so the first album was with the Austin band. Second album was with the Fort Worth band. No, the um, the first one was with the Fort Worth rhythm section. Oh, I got you. And then a few local. Uh, T. Bonta, a local piano player, and then uh, Doug James also played horn on oh, it. Oh, yeah. from up north, but yeah. Yeah, well, that's and all. Jimmy got, and Jimmy was really cool. He played on it some yeah. local guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy, <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy. Uh, first name basis, that guy, he's the first to Jimmy, is Jimmy Vaughn. <laughs> Jimmy folks. Vaughn, that's right. Jimmy Vaughn, yeah, yeah the Jimmy Vaughn. So, so yeah, what, what a thrill was it to go see Jimmy Vaughn for the first time or second time or third time? Yeah, it's always a thrill. I, my, me and my dad went and saw him actually for the first time down at Sam's, which we were just talking about. We went yeah. down there and saw him and Lou Ann, and I got to meet him and his band, a guy named Billy Pittman, who I'm still, who oh, also you, plays with me sometimes. Oh, yeah. That, that guy's an Austin all-star for sure. Yeah, 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 totally. Billy Pittman. And and so I was probably 13 or so, and I was starting to kind of meet these guys, and I was like, man, it's so cool. I knew that's what I wanted to be doing. <laughs> that, that, that was great. And, and the, for him to, the way I understand, he kind of he volunteered to play on your album a, a little bit. Or, yeah, or, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Kind yeah. of, yeah. He, um, we'd known each other a bit, and then there was the connection there kind of was with this guy who recorded me, recorded the record named Billy Horton, because Billy um, plays, is in Jimmy's band. I got and to so that. he maybe, and then Billy reached out to me and said, "Hey, I think Jimmy might be willing to play on your record." I'm like, "Yeah, man." <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yes, He's like, "If you want," so I'm like, "Ah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> uh, that is awesome. And of course, you know, you're moving down to Austin, and you, you being a younger thing, you know, the Austin community just seems like the, the musicians down here that they, they they reach out and help out anybody that w that wants help. You know, and it, it's it's good and talented. Uh, have you felt that same way? I mean, just oh, people yeah. been. You know, yeah. uh, helping you out as you go. I'm totally from when I, from when my dad used to drive me down. He would drive me down on school nights, and I'd get to see like some guy, like my f friends, you know, Mike Keller and Willie Pipkin, and some local guys, Greg Eiser. We'd see them play, and they were from, and then drive back and go to school the next day. And already those guys were like, they were. I would just kind of approach them, and they were so friendly. I, I guess I'm still. I don't know what it was. Maybe I was still young enough, and they're still. Everyone is still really friendly, though. I, yeah. I, I, I like that you mentioned those guys' names because Willie Pipkins, you know, he's so good. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Greg Eisner, did he move to Europe? He was talking he about was, doing it. I saw him about a few weeks ago. He's any day. He's going to do it pretty he, soon. He's going to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to miss him around here. Yeah, man. We're going to miss him for sure. Uh, but that is so good. So now, now the band, you know, you you, you got a band and it, it kind of changes around a little bit, but you know. Uh, you know, some blues guitar players, they just want a bass and a drum, but you seem to surround yourself with some other things sometimes. Yeah, I like to, well, I've kind of got a, the usual lineup is Damian Yanez and a guy named Gian Ortiz on bass, and it's, we kind of do the three-piece, but um, the, the the lineup changes sometimes because we're all involved in several projects, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's the usual lineup we've got going lately. Uh, and, and, of course, they sound really good there, and, and you talked about a, you know, got a horn player that kind of comes around uh, that played on one of the CDs, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, Doug James, uh, he, he did all the horns on that CD, and uh, we have piano and uh, sometimes. And, and on the next, I'm looking forward to doing a new record soon, and I plan on including some other instruments Yeah, there. so you got you got a... Uh, date set out for going into studio for the next album? Uh, it'll not a, a definite one, but it'll be in the next month. 
the next oh, month. Oh, real soon. Yeah. yeah, real soon. Oh. It'll be pretty soon. And I've been putting together some stuff, pretty, pretty working on that pretty hard lately. And it's been been really enjoying that writing and so i'm looking forward to putting something in fresh out soon yeah and, and, and now that you started writing is that something you do all the time or, or do you like that deadline staring you in the face that you're gonna put out a cd well, in a month and uh maybe it's a little bit of both i've i uh, have really enjoyed writing now that i've started really doing it and putting i've just been listening to a lot of other things and i was like man i kind of want to do that so I've started doing it. I really enjoy it. But a deadline is a nice little incentive. Sometimes I can be a little too <laughs> laid back. So, well, I, I, I college read some Hunter S. Thompson books, and he talked about uh, the jackrabbit theory of uh, and that's how he appra- approached deadlines. You know, jackrabbit's going to sit on the side of the road and wait for those headlights to come, and before it runs across the road, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he liked the adrenaline of that <laughs> yeah. the deadline. You know, so, <laughs> gotta go there. all right, Dylan. Let's hear some more songs. This is Mister Dylan Bishop, folks. All right. Everybody needs prax in the heart of love. I got 20 years prax, baby, Lord above. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to do it, babe. Dish it out with ease. Well, don't encourage me, babe. I may go too far. I said, beat me, pop away late to the bar. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to do it, babe. Dish it out with these. I'll dish it out for you, babe. Oh, yeah. Well, I may be old fashioned. I may be dumb. I may be stupid, baby. Call me bum. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to do it, babe. Dish it out with these. I ain't done yet, baby. I know how to do it. 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 I know how to do it, babe. Dish it out with the earth. Yeah, yeah. Dylan Bishop, folks. Dylan Bishop. That sounds so good. So Thank good. You. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I guess... Uh, you know, I, I told you that I ha- it's been a little bit since I've seen you last, but I, I'm pretty sure that the show I saw you with, uh, you did have a saxophone player on stage with you, maybe. And may- maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm. It's been too long, and I'm just confused about it all. But uh, it's possible. It's, I would have to. Yeah, I'm. It's, you know, like you said, it's long, but there's a. Uh, it's possible. We yeah. have a few friends in Fort Worth who definitely. Uh, it wasn't the Fort Worth show. Oh. It was actually in the Austin show one time. And, oh, it was probably Doug James. It then. probably was Doug, Doug James, James. Yeah, sitting in there with you. Then, totally. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and of course you, you've got this all going right now, and everything's heading in the right direction. Uh, and and uh, you know you're playing acoustic today, but you're mm-hmm. normally. And tell everybody what is your normal guitar of choice? I usually play, uh, yeah, electric uh, Fender Stratocaster. And for all the like guitar people out there, I put a humbucker in it, and oh. like Wayne Kramer. <laughs> and uh, so that's my main guitar right now. I've been enjoying that Strat. And then, and how long have you had that? I've had that guitar for uh, f- four or five years now. Oh, good long time. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I've got it back in Dallas. It's a really cool guitar. I got it through a friend, but it used to belong to a guy named Anson Funderburg, who a lot of oh, you really? probably know. Anson Funderburg. Yeah, it's got. I got the receipt. It's got his name on it and everything. Now, now do you actually know him? <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. okay. He's a really. He's another one of my heroes. Who's been. Really gracious to me. Oh, you bet, you yeah. bet, yeah. 
Well, and I used to be a big, big Bugs Henderson fan, and I, he probably has passed away before you uh, got really interested in, in uh, guitars. But another one of the Fort Worth area guys, totally, is, yeah, is totally. always good there to, yeah. to go see. And, and like I said, you know, there's such a rich, rich history in the Fort Worth in the Dallas scene and all that kind of stuff. And it sounds like your dad. I mean, he definitely was very encouraging to you as you were coming up and playing guitar. Yeah, he really was. My uh, my parents have always been real real encouraging and supportive and uh you know driving me to shows and bending um curfew times and things like that <laughs> and uh they've always been really supportive it's yeah. cool and, and of course I, I i've done the same thing but taking my sons into clubs when they're way 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 way, way too early but but you know I, I feel like that's the only way to get them exposed to that good music you know yeah something about i think Music is something about seeing a live music thing. Seeing live music is just a whole nother experience. And you show it to anyone but a young person, they're going to be like, oh my. It's a it's a religious experience, or it can be, depending on who the band is. It is, it is, and yeah. uh, that's right. We, de my son and not, my sons and I, have definitely bonded over the years by by doing that kind of things. Also, you know, and uh, uh, things. So, you know, really, hats off to your dad. And yeah. I can't believe that from. You know, I, I assume y'all lived in North Metroplex area somewhere because of, uh, or out in Keller or whatever. You know, yeah, that, that made it even a little bit longer drive down to Austin to see those bands and stuff. And yeah, and for y'all to drive down and drive back, you know, on one night, you know, that's that's pretty good haul. Yeah, we would. You're right. We would drive down every win, not every, but a lot of Wednesdays, Wednesday nights, and over at a place called Evangelines. That that's when I would. I got to see Greg and those guys, the Peacemakers this group. You betcha. They yeah. got together and it probably still do. And um, they do. They, they still play yeah, there. Yes, they're yeah. killer. You should go check them out. Um, and my dad, yeah. So we would drive down and drive right back, and he would turn around and go to work at like 5 a.m. Those guys didn't even stop playing until I think at least midnight. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Evangelist too gets good food there too. Oh, yeah. yeah, and of course Red Volt card plays there a lot too. Another yeah, great man. guitar player around town. It's just a rich history of people around there. Well, uh, we're gonna have to step aside and uh, hear some fine words from some fine people, and we'll be right back with more Dylan Bishop. Support your young age like that, also like that. Uh, now you mentioned the Fender you play normally, but you brought a pretty interesting looking acoustic guitar right here. What are you What are you playing right now for? The musicians are lifting at home. Yeah, this is a uh, this guitar is uh, it's like a, it's my old only acoustic really. I guess it'd be considered an old arch top. It's a it's a Harmony Patrician is the name of it, and I just got this at a guitar show for a few hundred bucks a while ago, a few years ago, and uh, I think it's probably from the forties, thirties or forties. Wow. Yeah, it's a really now, cool guitar. Now I have not, you know, I'm not. I don't play or anything else, but a Harmony Patrician. I don't have heard of that brand at all. Yeah, so Harmony is the uh, the brand, and then Patrician would be the model. So, and Harmony is I don't I could be a little mistaken, but as far as I know, like Harmony and Silvertone, those were like the brands that you would kind of get out of the Sears catalog back oh, in the day. Okay, you know, you okay, know, order yeah. a Harmony, and, and they made a whole range of from beginner model guitars to professional and all in between and you still get them and they're cool old guitars oh you bet you bet yeah, yeah we've had so many people come in with those out there and of course it's got a great sound to it and how long have you had it you said oh probably about five or six years oh you yeah you take keep your car guitars huh oh yeah now, now now most guitar players have like eight or nine guitars uh -huh. or like, are you one of those people or are you just got a couple of them? i've got quite a bit i've got at least eight or nine too but i've i've been I don't sell many of them, but a few of them I let them go because uh, you get you kind of feel guilty toward them if you don't play them or something. Yeah. It's like they're, man, they're, they're being neglected in the corner, are, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, they are, and that's not cool. They put it up for adoption. Yeah. yeah right. All right. Well, Dylan, let's hear another song. All right. Cool. I've been a bad, bad, bad fellow, Mary. You know I didn't intend. 
intend to be If I've been a bad fellow, Mary, you know I didn't tend to be. Well, I've been hanging around here three long weeks, and you know it. You know it ain't no good for me. Treat me, baby, you know that I begin to think Oh, baby You know my life don't mean a thing Well, it breaks my heart when you Yeah, when you call Mr. So-and-so's name Troy Bard remarks that you are truly an old musical soul. <laughs> yeah, and you've got to get that quite a bit, just because you are so young. And say, I mean, people say, "What do you know about the blues?" You know, what do yeah. you know about the blues? But uh, yeah. you sure can play them a lot. Yeah, I'm sure Thank play you. them well. And, and, and so, what do you usually? How do you usually respond when somebody throws that out to you? You're too young to know the blues. Oh, I just figure. Uh, I just play. It just makes me feel good, so I play it. I don't know. <laughs> That's all I do. Yeah. I just, yeah, I get some kind of feeling from it, and that's what excites me about it. I think anyone can grasp that feeling, and then maybe you get you get certain experiences in your life later, and you start to connect some dots again. You're like, oh, okay, that's what they're talking about. <laughs> but you still feel something from it, I think. You definitely feel something. What a great job you do there. Uh, how can people find out more about Dylan Bishop? You got all those social medias, website, and all that kind of good stuff? Yeah, I've got, um, I'm on Facebook at Dylan Bishop, it's D-Y-L-A-N, Bishop, and then I'm on Instagram, it's, um, it's at, it's like D-Bish 1998, and then I've got a website, DylanBishopBlues.com, and on all of those is where we post shows, but you go on our website and that's got calendar, contact information, all that. All, all good stuff, good mm -hmm. stuff there. And, and, and uh, you got a couple CDs out, mm -hmm. are they on the, you know, all the usual d digital downloads and all that kind of stuff? So the um, both CDs you can get on our website, uh, Dylan Bishop Blues, and then the uh, first CD we put out is called The Exciting Sounds. is available on most of the digital formats, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. The newer one, Distilled, is only available on the website or at shows. Oh, at that, that's that's where you want to pick it up anyway. Yeah. You've got a show for sure. And uh, what about any shows? you got any shows coming up in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I've got a few. Um, I'm playing tonight over at... Um, Botticelli's on South Congress uh, from 8 to 10. I'll be doing a, a, a set with a girl named Jess Fuller. We're doing a duo set, and then later in the night, my band will come up and we'll do the full thing. Oh, man, that's pretty cool. Now, is that, are you going to do the first set acoustic with her? Yeah, it'll be acoustic, the two oh, of us. She, cool. she sings and plays piano, real talented musician as well, and we've got a duo set. Works up some covers, like some cool covers. Like some, I, you know what, I didn't even know they were still doing music at Botticelli's. I, I've been yeah. there several years ago and I haven't been back in a long time, yeah. Yeah, they, are, they sure are. We love it over there. I got a, some good friends there and really friendly staff and great food. So you should. So, so what time is the early show going to go with? I mean, with you and her. So that'll be it's a, that'll be from like that'll be from eight to uh, eight till nine. And then nine o'clock, you're gonna come back with your band or nine thirty yep, or so. That's right. That's after right. After break in, yeah. So it'll be a fun night. Oh, it'll be a great night. Yeah. Yeah. And then what else you got you going on? I, I know you're playing all the time. Yeah, and tomorrow I'm going to Fort Worth. I've got a, a show there. Um, another duo thing with Cadillac Johnson, the two of us, and uh, we do every Monday night. 
we um, we play out at Samstown Point from ten or from nine till eleven. Now is that full band? That's the full band. That's yeah. yeah. That's with Damien and Gian, and we're that's a really cool. You should check that out. Um, now, now where in Fort Worth are you playing with Cadillac? At? We're playing. I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's a place called Heart Eight Barbecue, and they've got a few locations. And I don't want to say the wrong one, but it's on the website. Yeah, okay, good, good, yeah. Because yeah. Heart Aid is one of those ones that does have several. But good, it's good barbecue, though, yeah. Oh, good, yeah, good. great barbecue. Well, we got time for one more song. How about it, Dylan? All right, I think I can do that. Papa didn't bring no coffee home. Mama got mad at Papa didn't bring no coffee home. He said, Mama, Mama, you know I ain't trying to do you wrong. She said, Pop, Pop, Papa, run here quick. She said, Papa, Pop, and Papa better run here quick. I like the coffee you pour me, but the cream is just a little too thick. I said I ain't mad at you. Don't be mad at me, babe. I ain't mad at you. Don't be mad at me. I wanna love you now, baby, though you ain't no good for me. I love you, babe. So don't be mad at me I'm gonna love you now, baby Though you ain't no good for me Well, hey, mama Look at sis She's in the backyard Learning to do the twist mm-hmm, Baby, better bring my coffee home I said, mama, mama I think you've been doing me wrong Dylan Bishop, Dylan Bishop, again tonight at Bordicelli's, right. uh, starting at 8 o'clock. That's right. 8 o'clock, that's yeah, what it was, yeah. <laughs> and with a duo, and then after that, his full band's going to come out, so you get the best of both worlds yeah. tonight. Yeah, it's cool, it'll be fun, great food too. And, and is this the first time, I, I forgot her name. Her name is Jess Fuller, yes. And Jess Fuller, is this the first time playing with her in a, in a duo set? Or? We've done a few shows now, yeah. Um, and it's really cool. It's some original material and also some cool covers, some like Velvet Underground and stuff like that. It's a cool mix of music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm always saying, wow, he knows who that, he knows that person. Yeah, Velvet Underground <laughs> throwing another one out there from way back here. Yeah, it's, uh, that is so cool. And how, how'd you first come involved with her? How'd you first meet her? I met Jess at one of my shows. Uh, at, I was playing at Lambert's once, and she was living in California at the time. And, uh, and she saw me play, and we kind of connected there and stayed in touch. And she ended up coming out here to Austin and has been staying here and playing shows for a while. And uh, we, so we maintained a long-distance relationship, but now we're both playing music together here and out in the Austin area. Oh, that's cool. That's real cool. She's great. Right? Yeah, she's real good. She has a website, too, at Jess Fuller Music, and she's really cool. Oh, good deal, good deal. And, and, and uh, you are playing, I mean, are you doing a song swap or you're actually playing together? We're playing together. Oh, okay. We're uh, playing together, yeah. Harmonies and all that. Uh, all, all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah. huh? All that good stuff on there. All oh, that sounds so good. But uh, uh, and I, you know what I, what I failed to mention on all this is is I believe it was your dad who met somebody else at this station and uh, uh, I I've been you know I've been trying to figure out how to contact you. I think I sent you something on through social media one time, but been trying to, you know, get to one of your shows. I said, man, I need to get this guy, young man on my show, my show. And then your dad was actually in Wimberley, Texas at a street dance here in yeah. town. And I, I got to meet him and he hooked me up with your number. And I, man, I so appreciate you coming on the show today. And uh, we're, we're going to step aside real quick and do a station idea. And we'll come back and wrap things up with Dylan Bishop. So stay with us. 
back or easy with Coach. And, man, we've had the incredible Dylan Bishop. I can't say enough about how enjoyable this is, having this young man on the show. And uh, uh, I hope I'm going to get him to say it right here on the air that uh, you will come back someday and play on our show, won't you? Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You heard it. Folks. Oh, yeah. We're going to have this thing recorded, and, uh, yeah, it'll all be out there where he will definitely come back again. Any shout-outs? Anybody want to say hi to that might be listening in? Uh, yeah, I'll say hi to my mom. I'm pretty sure she's listening up in Fort Worth, and my dad probably is too. And our good friend James and Nancy Taylor, I'll bet they're listening. And Jess is maybe listening if she's awake. Oh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, I'm going to put you to the test right here. Our pop quiz of the day, I've been busy. I hadn't checked to see if we got an answer to this. But I can honestly say I was a fan of this, and I don't know the answer to this. It's a tough one. The unkept shaggy of the Scooby-Doo cartoons. You know Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Has a very proper name. What is it? Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't know he had a name. I, yeah. I didn't know he was Shaggy. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I, I got to guess. Is it Dinks mis- Mixed Milks a lot? <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he was always much now. Oh, yeah. I don't a know lot lot and Scooby Snacks, man. Yeah, Scooby <laughs> Snacks. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. His name was Norville Rogers. Oh, yeah. I had no idea. I, had first a, I had no idea that he had a real name out there. Wow. Well, uh, going on in Austin, and like I always say, if you get in for nothing, make sure you need a little something for the band, and of course, Dylan Bishop, uh, going to be with Jess Fuller, That's right. Uh, first acoustic uh, duo, and then uh, later on, his full band's going to be a, uh, what's that name, Bordicello's? Yep. Bordicello's, and that's on South Congress. That's a friendly location. You can actually find places to park around close, semi-close by there, and uh, it's a nice little venue out, out the back door there, and nice and pleasant.